Hello folks, how are you today? I hope you had a happy Thanksgiving, time with family and friends. It's a wonderful time of the year, isn't it? And we're beginning a brand new study together in the book of Jeremiah. I'm looking forward to it and I hope that you are too. It's going to be a rich study because we're going to be reading the writings of one of the greatest of the Old Testament prophets and we're also going to be getting a glimpse into the life of a person who had an extremely close relationship with God. This means that this study of Jeremiah cannot but draw each of us closer to God. And that's one of the values that we look for as we read through Scripture. In this brief video, I want to do two things. I want to give you an introduction to the book of Jeremiah. It'll be brief and a preview of Jeremiah chapter 1, our readings for the next three or four days. Now, Jeremiah, as I said, was one of the great prophets of ancient Israel. You may know that once upon a time, Israel divided into two separate kingdoms, a northern kingdom called Israel and a southern kingdom called Judah. And by the time of Jeremiah, the northern kingdom was no more. Jeremiah preached to and prophesied about the southern kingdom, Judah. His ministry was roughly 40 years long, from 627 to 587 B.C. This time period covers the final 40 years of Judah's decline. She is completely destroyed by Babylon in 586 B.C. Perhaps this chart is helpful to you. Think of the Old Testament prophets doing their work in three ages, an Assyrian age, a Babylonian age, and a Persian age. As I said, Jeremiah prophesied during the Babylonian age. As he began to preach, the Assyrian empire is in decay, and the kingdoms of Egypt and Babylon and the kingdom of the Medes are all waiting to pick up the pieces. So as Jeremiah begins to write, Judah is a nominal vassal of Assyria. Then she enjoys a brief period of independence, after which she becomes a vassal of Egypt, and finally a vassal of Babylon, and then she is destroyed. And Jeremiah preaches the word of God through all of these periods. He experienced all of this. In fact, he prophesied under the reign of five kings in Judah. And I want you to listen closely to this because this is going to be on the final exam. You're going to need to recite these five kings in order. They are the boy king Josiah, Jehoahaz, Jehoiakim, Jehoiakim, and Zedekiah. Do you have that? I'm not sure you can even go to heaven unless you know the names of those five kings. <laughs> For the most part, the central theme of the book of Jeremiah is God's judgment against Judah and the nations. The last several chapters are Jeremiah's uh, preaching against the nations. But it's, it's, it's sort of a pessimistic, negative book because Judah has left her God. She has broken covenant with God. She has gone after the false gods and started to worship what she can make with her hands, and God is not pleased. And so this book tells of God's judgment against Judah. That's certainly true of the first 25 chapters of Jeremiah. But, as I said earlier, it's, all the story, it's also the story of a man who had a very close relationship with God, and it's a good thing because his message was not popular to the people of his day. I doubt he had very many friends. He needed the friendship that he had with God. God was his only source of refuge. Can you relate to that? Anyway... We're going to see that more and more in our study. Let me give you a quick preview of Jeremiah chapter 1 before you begin to read this wonderful chapter. First is our superscription where we are introduced to a few details of the prophet Jeremiah, the divine source of his message, and uh, the period during which he prophesied. This will lead us into his call, the call of God. Oh, this is such a rich passage. You're going to enjoy it. That will lead us into two visions that Jeremiah receives, visions about judgment against Judah. And the chapter concludes with a stern, stern call, a stern charge 
and a comforting promise from God himself. Now, I need to apologize in advance. That December the 1st reading of the last part of chapter 1 is a long one. I made a mistake when I broke down this reading schedule into bite-sized pieces. I made this one too big. But still, it's a rich passage. As you read through it and pray through it, I know you're going to get a lot of good out of it. So much good out of it. Well, we're going to enjoy reading through and praying through this book together. And I want to thank you again for joining us in this rich study. Your company is very precious to me. (music) 